this cold weather, we'll get these bugs stirred up, get them out moving around. Oh, that's a bug. That's a good bug. Welcome back to Hunting with Cannons, guys. It feels really good to be able to say that again. Deer season is finally upon us again. Today is September 29th. Tomorrow is opening day of bow season in Texas. So right now I'm on my way from Oklahoma back into Texas and we're gonna get a few sits in this weekend. So uh, last weekend I was over here, uh, we, we got everything ready. I got a new stand hung up. Uh, it's kind of down uh, in a bottom by a creek where it looks like the deer are moving through. Originally I was gonna put a cell cam back there to, to kind of see what was going on, but I couldn't get any signal back there. So we're kind of just going into it blind tomorrow. But there is another stand out there where I did hang a cell cam and we've got a big bachelor group of bucks that have been in there a couple nights this week. Uh, so we're gonna go in tomorrow morning, we're gonna hunt that new stand, kind of see what's going on, and then in the evening we're gonna head over to that other stand and uh, get settled in there and see if we can't catch that, that group of bucks coming in uh, and at least get eyes on them, maybe even sling an arrow, who knows. But I've got about another three hours on the road until I'm back home, uh, then I'll get everything packed up, uh, ready to go for in the morning, and uh, I'll see you guys in the deer stand tomorrow. here for the afternoon it's about four o'clock and I'm walking into the stand right now we're gonna go get set up and I'm hoping and praying that that bachelor group of bucks is gonna be coming through here in a couple hours so fingers crossed let's go see if we can't get it done mid-October right now. It's about five in the morning. Just got back in from college yesterday, running off about five hours of sleep. About to head out, get out in the stand this morning and uh, see if we can't get on some deer. All right guys, it's October 21st. Uh, it's about 5 a.m. We're about to head out to the ranch, get set up in a tree this morning. Uh, Big Daddy and my dad are going. They're going to sit up in the tower stand. We've had a bunch of big pigs coming in there in the morning. It's like 7.15. Big Daddy and my dad are sitting in the tower stand, and they both just shot. Pretty sure they just got the big hogs that have been coming in there every morning. There he is, Cammy. Talking. Talking to you. We got the broad side of this one, and Big Daddy counts out three, two, one. Kapowie. I think you're right, Cannon. Somebody shot at two and a half, but I'm not going to tell you if it was me or Big Daddy. Man's got to do what a man's got to do. That's right. Here he lays. Um, it's officially the week of Thanksgiving. Uh, me and Big Daddy, we're going to go out there. We're going to hit it hard this week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Family's coming in on Thursday. Um, should be a fun week. We're going to go out there this morning. We're going to get set up, I uh, believe, in the tower stand, hunt together this morning, and uh, enjoy the day. So here we go. Oh, there he is again. Going. Where is he? Well, the wily coyote gave us the slip. <laughs> Just got in here for the afternoon sit. Me and Big Daddy split up this afternoon. He's about 200 yards uh, back here to my left in another field. Um, but there's a bit of a weather change this afternoon. It's about 70 degrees now uh, as compared to the 50s this morning, and we've got a lot of wind. I think we 
just had a little bug chase in some dough down at the edge of this field. I barely got a glimpse of it, but I think I saw a little more. It's about two o'clock, just got set up. We had those deer in here when we walked in. I think it was about four or five doe, um, but that's a good sign that they're out and moving. Um, hopefully they'll bring some bucks back with them here in a little bit, but I'm pretty confident that they'll be coming back later. They kind of uh, hang out here kind of regularly, so I'm sure we'll be seeing them again later. Well, boys, it looks like the deer won again. I'm out here busting my tail off every single day, man. They never show. No buck this evening. We'll be back out here in the morning, though. Getting pretty discouraged, but we're going to keep our head held high. Just like this, we're going to keep it up. Keep it held high. And we're going to be back out here in the morning. And I'm going to be just like this with my head held high. And we're going to shoot the big one right here. Okay, my neck's starting to hurt, but we'll be back in the morning. We'll be back. We had a cold front move in last night, so it's about 30 degrees uh, as compared to the 50 degrees it's been the rest of the week. I'm back in the same spot that I was last night. Uh, this is where I've been seeing the most dough consistently. Hopefully this morning they'll bring a buck with them. That's what I'm betting on. Maybe this cold weather will get these bucks stirred up, get them out moving around. But I'm going to sit tight, try and stay warm, see what the morning brings with it. On a cold morning, you got to have some coffee in the deer stand, so... Here's some coffee ASMR for you. It's really not as good if you don't go ah after every sip. It just kind of adds to it. <laughs> we had a couple of dough come in a second ago. And I thought they were looking at me, but turns out a little bug came behind me. It's a little full corn. Kind of got them stirred up a little bit. But that's a good sign that there's at least one buck up and moving. He's not the biggest deer in the woods, but hopefully that's a sign of things to come. And then I just looked over here to my right, and uh, we've got three more doe feeding over here in this corner. So all we need is a nice buck to come strolling on through, and that would be great. So we're going to hold out for it. But I'm going to watch these doe over here, see how they act. And, um, oh. oh, that's a buck. That's a good buck. That's a good buck. Oh, please come this way. It's definitely a shooter. It looked like he was going to work his way over here, but now he's kind of headed down towards these other doe. There he
I'm juiced. There are still deer all around me. I'm looking at two doe here. I've got five over here running around in the woods, and this buck has just been chasing them around out here in front of me all stinking morning. And I have just been waiting, dude. These doe finally came out in this field. I was like, dude, he is on their trail. He is about to be out here. And I saw him coming through the woods, dude, right here, probably 60 yards. I blew his stinking, I don't even, dude, it's bad. I mean, his, his stuff is hanging out his side. Dude, I've been at this since October 1st, and here we are, dude. Oh, let's go. Gosh, it's a good feeling, dude. There are deer everywhere. Oh, I gotta call Big Daddy. Hey. I got a, got a big eight-point land right here in front of me. <laughs> Are you kidding, Cam? I'm dead serious. All right, well, send me a picture here in a minute. All right, I will. Dude, I am shook up. Dude, this is, this is why I love hunting right here. Dude, oh my gosh. Oh, man. I honestly, like, am so curious to see what he actually is. I think he's an eight. Boys, he's missing. He's missing a brow tine. That's what I'm talking about, dude. He's not a giant, but man, it feels good. I'm gonna get him propped up, take a few pictures of him. What a beautiful morning, dude. Look at this sun. That is, that's gorgeous, dude. What a beautiful deer, beautiful morning. Just awesome, dude. I enjoyed every second of it and I could not be more thankful. Thank you, Lord for another awesome hunt. I'm gonna go get back in the stand, drink some coffee for a little bit, and uh, wait for Big Daddy to get over here, and uh, then we'll get him taken care of. But man, I look like a freaking idiot right now. I'm gonna just go ahead and take that off. There we go, that's much better. I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> we got him. Wow. <laughs> nice buck, man. He's high, isn't he? He is. What a morning, Cannon. <laughs> it was awesome. Pretty well already to feel this. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> well, it's November 22nd. Uh, I've been I've been at it for about two months now. We started uh, October 1st out here with my bow, actually, on this property. Uh, we've been hunting hard this week. It's the week of Thanksgiving, so we've got family coming in this afternoon. So. Uh, we've been hunting hard the past couple days before they all got here. Very exciting hunt, very beautiful morning, and I uh, could not be more thankful for this deer, but glad I got to, to capture all that and get to tell the story. So hope you guys enjoyed, uh, and I'll see you next time. God bless. If you guys are new to the channel, I want you to stick around for just a moment. At the end of each video that you find on this channel, I always like to have a devotional thought from God's Word that ties back into the video that you just watched. I do this to hopefully encourage those of you who are Christians in your faith and in your walk with Christ, but I also do it for those of you who do not identify as Christians to show you guys who Jesus is and what He has done for you. Now today I want to draw your attention to the fact that the video you just watched was completely self-filmed. Now I don't want you to hear what I'm about to say and think that I'm being conceited or prideful because that's the last thing that I want you to think. But it will make sense in a moment when I tie it together with the analogy that I'm gonna make. Now, like I said, this was completely self-filmed and there's a lot of work that goes in behind making these videos for you guys to watch. And you guys don't necessarily see all the time and effort that goes into it. You just merely consume the video that is put in front of you. And that's okay, that's why I make them. I enjoy doing it and I make it for you guys. But with me being the hunter, the videographer, and the editor, my plate is definitely full. But the analogy I wanna make today is that our relationship with God should look like this and this is actually 
precisely what Jesus teaches us that it should look like. There should be a lot more in our relationship with God going on behind the scenes than just what people see in public. Now the scripture I'm going to take you to today to kind of back up this analogy is Matthew 6 and we're going to look at verses 5 and 6. So starting in verse 5, Jesus says, When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your Father in private. Then your Father, who sees everything, will reward you." Now the first thing I want to clear up here before we get started is Jesus is not condemning public acts of worship, but rather the hypocritical motives that sometimes can come with them. Prayer in public settings such as church or with family, friends, your spouse, or whoever it may be, is a good thing. And that's something we should practice as Christians because it not only strengthens our relationship with God, but it also strengthens our relationships with others and makes sure that we have a, a godly and Christ-centered relationship with that person. But what Jesus is condemning here is when we only do these things with the intent of gaining respect from others rather than building a sincere relationship with God. Now in the scripture Jesus talks about the Jewish religious leaders at the time who would who would pray publicly on the street corners and they would do it only with the intent of being seen by others and gaining their respect. And Jesus tells us in this verse that that is all the reward that they will ever get. So yes they would gain the respect of men by doing this but what is the point of that if they're not growing in favor of God? Why would you rather serve man than serve God. So Jesus then tells us the importance of praying in solitude, of, of going away, shutting yourself off from the outside world, and spending time one-on-one -on -one with God. And if we do this, if we put ourselves in a position where we are solely focused on God, we can ensure that our heart will be focused on God rather than the selfish motives of our flesh. Now Jesus not only taught this to us, but he practiced it as well. We see many times throughout the Gospels accounts of Jesus leaving his disciples or leaving the crowd that is around him to go to a place of solitude and pray with God alone. Now a point here that I want you to keep in mind is that Jesus is 100% man and that he is 100% God. Yet the part of him that was man still needed and sought out prayer to maintain his relationship with God. And if Jesus, who is 100% man and 100% God, needed to do that, how much more then do we need to make sure that prayer is a constant part of our life? If we look further into Jesus' prayer life, we see that he always spent time in prayer before a big event took place in his life. And a moment like this that I think of is his prayer to God in the Garden of Gethsemane prior to his crucifixion. If we look over in Matthew chapter 26, in verse 39 it says, He went on a little farther and bowed with his face to the ground, praying, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done and not mine. So we see at the beginning of this, Jesus distances himself from his disciples. He goes off to a place of solitude and seeks God. I think Jesus' reasoning for constantly seeking God in prayer was to make sure that his mind was always fixed on seeking the will of God above the will of his flesh. And we see that in Jesus asking for God's will to be done and not his his own, but Jesus also teaches us to do this in our own prayers. In Matthew chapter 6, where we just were a second ago, just a few verses down is where we find uh, what we call the Lord's Prayer. And in that prayer, Jesus teaches us to pray that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now sometimes others ask, and I find myself asking the same thing sometimes, why doesn't God always answer my prayers? And the best answer I can really give you or myself is that our requests don't always line up with the will of God for our life or for his kingdom for that matter. And this can be a hard pill for us to swallow at times, but at the end of the day, we have to remember that God is all knowing, he is all powerful, and he is always seeking out what is best for us in our life and what is best for his kingdom. So we have to learn to trust him with our prayers and with our requests that we bring to him and trust that he will answer them in the way that they need to be answered. It may not always be the way that we expect it, but it may be some indirect way that we see sometime later in the future. But I think the more that we start to connect with God through His Word and through spending time in prayer alone with Him, I think the more we do these things, the closer we will, we will feel connected to God, and then in turn we will start seeking His will more than we seek the will of our own life, and we will try to live out His kingdom on this earth. Now before I finish, I want to take you guys to one more verse that shows how living in sin can affect our prayer life and our relationship with God. If if we look over in Proverbs chapter 15 and at verse 29, it says, The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. Now the wicked are those who are still living in sin, those who have not given up the ways of their flesh in order to follow Jesus. This verse says that God is far from the wicked. And in contrast to this, it says he hears the prayers of the righteous. So this leads me to believe that God does not hear the prayers of the wicked. So the question then comes up, how do we become those righteous ones that God hears and that God listens to? Well, first off, 
off, there is no way for us to achieve righteousness on our own, but there is a way that we can do that through Jesus and what he has done for us. So I want to take you to 2 Corinthians, and we're going to look at chapter 5, verse 21. It says, For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. It says that we are made right with God through Christ. It is through Christ that we are able to be seen as righteous. It is by becoming connected to Jesus, who paid the price for our sin by his death and his resurrection, that we are seen as righteous in God's sight. So if it is by becoming connected to Christ, how then do we go about becoming connected to Him? Well, it is first done by recognizing our sin and coming to God with a repentful heart of faithfulness, believing in what Jesus Christ did for us, and then becoming connected to Him in baptism for the forgiveness of our sins. If we look at Galatians 3.27, it says, And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like new clothing. It says we become united with Christ through baptism. And if we look over in Romans chapter 6 at verse 5, it says, since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. So since we are united with Jesus by our baptism, we then have a hope of being raised to life like he was. And what a wonderful promise that is for us that God has made available to everyone through his son. So to wrap things up, I want to again encourage you to spend time alone in prayer with God in solitude, just as Jesus teaches us to do. If Jesus needed to do it, Lord knows that we need to do it too. By doing so, you will find your relationship with God strengthened. You will find that your hope in Jesus will be renewed each day, and you will start to find yourself in an avid pursuit of God's will for your life each day.